Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we learn about heme synthesis. So, uh, what is the objective of my class today will be the synthesis of heme with respect to the site, subcellular site, the reactions, its regulation and the effect of lead poisoning on this process. So, let us see this wonderful molecule of heme how it is synthesized. So, what we see in our environment is the sunlight which is the predominant source of energy available to all of us. For some reason we were not able to use this effectively in the animal kingdom whereas, the plant kingdom can use this sunlight energy and it generates not only oxygen for us by using the carbon dioxide which is exhaled from all of us it also generates important energy rich molecule which is the predominant energy giving molecule to all of us that is carbohydrate. It simply joins the carbon dioxide which is the waste uh, material excreted from us with a simple water and uses the energy of the sunlight and forms carbohydrates. And you just see the structure of this molecule which does this, this is called as chlorophyll. You can see the structure of chlorophyll on the right hand side and the heme on the left hand side. Very, It is very surprising to know the structure all almost the same. Both of these molecules they have a tetrapyrrole porphyrin like ling rings and only difference being the central atom. In the chlorophyll we have the magnesium whereas, in case of the heme we have the iron. Just because of such a small difference what heme can do is totally different what chlorophyll will do is totally different. You can see here in case of heme uh, it does the exactly reverse it uses the energy which is present in the sugar which is formed from the plant or vegetables. Unlike the plant it does not require sunlight it uses the enzymes present in the system and converts it into converts it back to carbon dioxide and water in our body in the bargain generating lot of energy for our survival. So, this is very important to know how this uh, beautiful important wonderful molecule is synthesized in our body. So, let us first see where it is synthesized the site it is predominantly synthesized in mitochondria and part of it is in the cytoplasm. So, it has a unique uh, pathway which is partially mitochondria and partially in the cytoplasm. There is a very important reason for it because a very important molecule it should be synthesized only when there is a need for it. So, by virtue of making the pathway in two different compartments that is partially mitochondrial and partially in the cytoplasm it helps it more efficient regulation of this pathway. This mechanism is called as regulation of a pathway by compartmentalization. Now, let us see how this is formed. So, whenever there is a need to form heme we require some starting resource material that is glycine which is present in our diet and the succinyl coa you all of you know it is formed in the intermediate of TCA cycle. So, and it forms the first important 
intermediate of this pathway called as delta amino levulinic acid. This requires an enzyme is called as ALA synthase which is a key rate limiting enzyme of this entire pathway which is tightly regulated. As you can see here, it is even regulated at the level of transcription that means whenever there is a need to form lots of heme transcriptionally this entire process is increased so that more and more ALA synthase is made available. This uh, reaction of formation of delta amino levulinic acid of the succinyl coa of TCA cycle intermediate is a typical example for anabolic reaction because TCA cycle we call as amphibolic pathway. So, whenever there is a use for anabolic reaction, so it is called as that kind of pathway which can work in both as a catabolic as well as anabolic reactions is called as amphibolic pathway. So, the delta amino levulinic acid is formed. This uh, first step is present in the mitochondria. The second step onwards, this delta amino levulinic acid formed now comes back outside from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, it condenses two such molecules of delta amino levulinic acid condenses to form a molecule compound called the porphobilinogen. Further four such porphobilinogens will condense to form an intermediate called as hydroxymethyl bilane which further forms one more important compound the first porphyrinogen in this entire pathway called uroporphyrinogen. Up till here the compounds are no not porphyrins. So, from this is the first cyclical compound called as uroporphyrinogen. This gets decarboxylated to form coproporphyrinogen 3. Now, this molecule up to this step that is step number 2, 3, 4 and 5 are present in the cytoplasm. The coproporphyrinogen now will come back into mitochondria and it forms protoporphyrinogen by the enzyme coproporphyrinogen oxidase. So, then further it goes for one more oxidation to form protoporphyrin. So, that then comes the last step of this reaction wherein the iron atom gets incorporated by the enzyme ferrochelatase to form heme. Once this heme is formed in the mitochondria, it will get released into the cytoplasm where it can bind with the globin. Please note hemoglobin is heme plus globin. Globin is a protein, heme is a prosthetic group. So, together they form hemoglobin. So, this is an overview of this entire process. So, let us now see in detail each of these steps. So, as was mentioned the first important rate limiting reaction which is present in the mitochondria is the condensation of succinyl CoA an intermediate of TCA cycle with the glycine amino acid in the presence of the enzyme delta amino levulinic acid synthase which is a key rate limiting enzyme of this pathway to form delta amino levulinic acid. This enzyme requires a coenzyme or cofactor called pyridoxal phosphate or vitamin B6. So, whenever there is a deficiency of vitamin B6 that can significantly 
impair the formation of ALA and hence heme. So, such cases can lead to decreased heme formation which can further lead to microcytic hypochromic anemias. Now, as I mentioned the second step onwards it comes to the cytosol. The two molecules of ALA gets condensed in the presence of enzyme ALA dehydratase to form porphobilinogen. So, as you can see here it has two side chains this is an acetyl group this is a propionyl group. So, this enzyme is requires zinc as a cofactor for its action. So, whenever there is a zinc deficiency is there it can again lead to decrease heme formation and same effects like that of pyridoxin deficiency. Also one external factor called as lead lead is a actually is a poison it is not a nutrient is usually accidentally ingested especially this lead is present in paints fresh paints and the lead pipes uh, and also in paints coated on to the toys which uh, small infants try to have a tendency to bite on. So, whenever there is a lead poisoning it can also affect severely the heme synthesis pathway. So, as you can see here the predominantly for remaining reaction you are going to see these four important side groups out of which I already mentioned uh, the propionyl group in the porphobilinogen and acetyl group. So, what happens is in the process of synthesis in the series of reactions there will be oxidation and decarboxylation and only this acetyl and propionyl group gets modified. So, as you can see whenever the acetyl group is modified by decarboxylation it forms methyl group. Similarly, whenever the propionyl group gets decarboxylated and oxidize usually propionyl group gets decarboxylated as well as oxidize it will form vinyl group. So, why I am telling you this is because the primary compound formed as porphobilinogen it goes for series of condensation and oxidation reaction these group on the side chain keep changing from A P or M V that means acetyl propionyl vinyl and methyl group. This makes us to understand this pathway better. Now, as mentioned the next reaction condensation of four molecules of porphobilinogen by removal of four molecules of ammonia the enzyme correctly as you can mention as porphobilinogen D aminase to form the first tetrapyrrole in this called as hydroxy methyl bilane. Still, it is not a ring structure, so still it is not a porphyrin. So, but it is a first beginning step of formation of porphyrin. So, but you can see the still the side chains of porphobilinogen it is acetyl and propionyl still remains the same. So, but uh, to form a porphyrin or porphyrinogen there is a need to have a ring like structure by condensation which is formed by the same enzyme and forms the first uh, porphobilinogen uh, of this uh, pathway uh, that is uh, porph uh, and wherein the ring structure is formed and uh, you can see that side chains remains the same and other two categories of these compounds are formed. Uh, one has the as you can see first, second, third, fourth, 
fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth in the same order A, P, A, P, A, P and A, P whereas in the left hand side you can see in the third and fourth ring and in the fourth ring first, second and third ring it is the same category A, P, A, P, A, P whereas the fourth ring there is a swapping. So, this is called a 3 series this is a predominantly formed series of porphyrinogens whereas this is one series which is a very small amount in our system. So, predominantly all the porphyrins formed in our body is of 3 series the only difference is the ring 4 there is a swapping of acetyl and propanyl group. So, now we have formed the first uh, 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 porphyrin that is from the porphobilinogen the first porphyrin which is formed is a uroporphyrinogen which has a ring like structure. So, from there we have further condensation and oxidation reaction. If you compare the previous reaction if you closely observe only difference you can see is wherever the acetyl group was there all were replaced by methyl group. If I, ex I as I explained you before when acetyl becomes methyl group the only reaction that is possible is decarboxylation. So, as correctly 4 molecules of CO2 is removed here from the uroporphyrinogen to form coproporphyrinogen. As you please observe here is the ring 4 as swapped is A and P position here is M and P. So, it is a 3 series only henceforth whatever we talk is in the 3 series only. Now, the coproporphyrinogen further gets oxidized and condensed as you can see as compared to the previous structure what is the difference you can see the ring 1 and ring 2 in, in place of the propanyl group which was there in the previous structure you can see the propanyl group was here in ring 1 and ring 2 has been replaced to vinyl group. I, as I mentioned before whenever there is a propanyl group gets modified to vinyl two things happen one is decarboxylation and oxidation. So, this process we have oxidation as well as decarboxylation and the ring 1 and ring 2 the propanyl groups gets converted to vinyl group and the compound is named as protoporphyrinogen. This enzyme is coproporphyrinogen oxidase. Please note this reaction occurs in the mitochondria as I mentioned before coproporphyrinogen 3 enters the mitochondria for the further reaction. Now, the protoporphyrinogen 9 uh, is now which is formed here in the previous reaction get uh, further oxidized. What is the difference you can see the, the side chains remains the same the only difference what you can see is which was there in the compared to the, the methyl side chains the link uh, ring uh, whichever you have CH2 has been now oxidized to methenyl uh, bridges. So, as as every bridge loses 1 1 hydrogen. So, 4 hydrogen molecules are removed and forms a oxidized form of protoporphyrinogen called as protoporphyrin. Um, this uh, is now ready to take up the heme by the enzyme ferrochelatase which incorporates which incorporates the iron. So, it is ready to take up the iron it incorporates the iron and forms the complete hemoglobin. So, this is again this enzyme is prone to get inhibited by the lead. So, because of it uh, it is uh, iron is also an uh, micronutrient as a mineral lead, uh, lead is also a new, uh, mineral they can compete for each other and sometimes during lead poisoning this enzyme can be affected and can significantly affect heme synthesis. 
Now, let us uh, study how this uh, entire pathway is regulated. One I already mentioned is compartmentalization. That means, the one half of the pathway which is present in the mitochondria and other half is in the cytosol. So, by virtue of which there is a more tight regulation on this entire process. Next important mechanism of regulation is the key enzyme called as ALA synthase. As I mentioned before, is a key regulatory enzyme. It is gets not only transcriptionally regulated, also there is a one more mechanism called as allosteric feedback inhibition wherein this ALA synthase gets repressed whenever there is a too much of heme is there in the system no more required by the body it can have a rip feedback inhibition and it suppresses the action of ALA synthase and effectively con uh, controls formation of heme in our body. And if that stimulus is very strong it can also uh, genetically repress the transcription of ALA synthase enzyme. And some drugs especially which uh, require uh, utilizes detoxified using uh, heme containing compounds like cytochromes they sometimes can induce ALA synthase formation. For example, alcohol, phenobarbitone, some drugs which are metabolized in our body, which use a cytochrome enzyme systems, uh, as they require more heme for the detoxification, indirectly they can stimulate the ALA synthase formation. Other important uh, uh, coenzymes, cofactors uh, required or nutrients required for the entire process of heme synthesis are iron you know very well iron is an important uh, compound present in the center of heme whenever there is iron deficiency the entire process of heme synthesis can be influenced. Next is the PLP or pyridoxal phosphate I already mentioned this this is one of the important coenzyme required for ALA synthase whenever there is a pyridoxine or vitamin B6 deficiency it can significantly affect the ALA synthase activity. Next is a zinc. I already mentioned zinc is one of the important coenzyme required for ALA dehydratase action. So, whenever there is a dink, zinc deficiency again this enzyme will not function effectively. Coenzyme A S H is nothing but vitamin B5 or pentothenic acid. Succinyl coenzyme A is one of the starting material, starting raw material for heme synthesis. Coenzyme A is a component of many, many metabolic pathways in our body. That means it is a nothing but is a vitamin B5. So, whenever there is a coenzyme A is not available, you will not have enough succinyl CoA which is a starting material for heme synthesis. Of course, as I mentioned in my previous slide, after heme is formed, it will come out into the cytoplasm wherein it requires to join with the globin to form hemoglobin. The globin is formed only when there is a good amount of amino acids or proteins in our diet. Whenever there is a severe protein, energy, malnutrition and not enough amino acids are available, globin synthesis is also affected. So, hence it can significantly influence the hemoglobin formation. And somehow glucose we understood that glucose is a very good source of energy. They have found that for some reason whenever you have excess carbohydrate in our food, uh, it can suppress the heme synthesis. And of course, hematin. Hematin is nothing but a heme given artificially uh, to the person 
as a uh, method of treatment when in a problems uh, called as porphyrias. Porphyrias are nothing but a uh, congenital defects, you know, uh, this entire heme synthesis pathway because of the deficiency of one or more of these enzymes. So, to cure this porphyrias, sometimes doctors will give hematin, which can the how it is used the based on the regulation what we know is uh, ala synthase can have a feedback inhibition by heme so here we artificially give a heme like compound which can suppress the activity of ala synthase hence it will effectively can treat side uh, problems in case of persons suffering from porphyria summarize what we learned today is a heme synthesis pathway. It has uh, uh, multiple step pathway and it has uh, pathways partly in the mitochondria, partly in the cytoplasm. The first uh, key rate limiting reaction is ALA synthase which not only is tightly regulated by transcription it can also get influenced allosterically by hemoglobin or heme by feedback inhibition. And uh, most of this uh, uh, compounds which are formed as porphyrins are formed by series of oxidation, condensation, decarboxylation reactions and uh, these porphyrins are formed finally gets takes up the iron to form heme which comes to the cytosol which can join with the pro, uh, globin as a protein to form hemoglobin. What is the clinical application of this? So, whenever the person suffers from iron deficiency anemia, lead poisoning, pyridoxine deficiency and severe protein energy malnutrition. All these things are required for heme synthesis. I already mentioned they can significantly affect the heme synthesis and they can lead to decrease heme formation. Whenever there is a decrease heme formation, it leads to microcytic hypochromic anemia. There is some more category of problems that is vitamin C as well as copper and achlorhydrium is lack of acid in our stomach. How they can influence? All these three are required for effective absorption and transport of iron in our body. So, it can significantly hamper iron transport and absorption and indirectly it can cause hypochromic microcytic anemia. The last of this is a thalassemia. Thalassemia is nothing but a congenital defect in globin chain synthesis. Today we learned about heme synthesis. Similarly, the one more component of hemoglobin is a globin. If there is a any congenital defect in globin chain synthesis, that is called as thalassemia. So, such a disorders also can hamper the hemoglobin formation and also can cause hypochromic microcytic anemia. One more important thing we learned is the ability of ALA synthase and is a key regulatory enzyme which can be influenced by feedback inhibition. This knowledge is clinically applied by giving a patient with porphyria either by heme arginate hematin or high carbohydrate, all these three can effectively suppress ALA synthase and can help in alleviating problems in patient with porphyrias. Thank you for your patient attention.